really thought I was going to be in the first shot? Come on, y'all. Chairs in the shot every week. Just kidding. Um, guys, just want to say welcome back. Uh, if you're new here, I missed a week of posting, which feels like forever uh, when you're used to posting every week. Um, but I uh, just want to say thank you to the people who sent me messages on Slack and, and even on YouTube, leaving comments, just saying they're praying for me. I, I really appreciate that, seriously. Um, I uh, My hand was messed up last week, um, or it, it got hurt somehow. I'm not totally sure what happened. Uh, but nonetheless, it's been hurting really bad, and uh, it felt better, and I was super stoked. And then yesterday, when unfortunately we had Easter rehearsal, uh, yesterday my hand was hurting really bad, so that kind of sucked. But uh, we got through rehearsal, and today it's not hurting super bad. So I'm not sure what's going on, man. I got to go to the doctor. But um, all that to say, I wanted to post a video that I think will be really helpful for you guys and gals as you're entering the Easter weekend. Um, just how to set up your board specifically for live usage um, and finding a compromise between uh, accessibility but also efficiency. Uh, accessibility to your specific pedals but efficiency in terms of getting to the next song quickly, getting to the parts of the song, the verse, the chorus, the bridges, things like that. So I want to just take you over to my board and kind of show you the approach that I found is the best way to, to use the Helix live. So let's jump over to the board and uh, dive into this video a little more. Alright y'all, so this is my compromise shot. Uh, I want to get it tight enough that you can see what I'm actually doing but also make sure that you can see some of these other little live hacks that I like to call them um, that I've been doing recently. Uh, they weren't my idea. Uh, another guy on our team actually sort of started doing this with a few things and I just took it a little bit farther for, for my own thing. Um, but anyways, let's get first into how to set this board up for live usage, okay? So the thing that I found, uh, and if you'll go to your if you've never done this, if you've never worked with snapshots or presets before, like if you're just operating on one preset and treating your Helix like a pedal board, I would really encourage you to try this. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but it's pretty intuitive once you get it going. So hit your menu button. We're going to go to global settings. Then we're going to go to foot switches. All right. Um, and basically what you want to do is I, I like to have the 10 mode on, 10 switches. Okay, um, and then uh, snapshot mode switches, auto return, banks, up and down switches. Okay, uh, and then finally my preset. Um, so what I like to do with preset mode switches is set it to preset snap. Okay, what that means is on the top row you have your presets, and on the bottom row you have the snapshot within each of those presets. To me that's the best way to set this up, and the reason why is because I, I have access to all these specific parts of the song, right? I don't really need to get into my pedal board if I've already programmed this ahead of time. However, with one tap of the button, I can. Here's all my pedals, right? So if you get nervous or, or whatever, or you accidentally program something wrong, it's, it's one click, guys, and you're right into it. So it's very, very easy to access your pedal board that way. Okay? Um, but, so... I love having that there. The other thing is when we're switching songs, like a lot of times we'll just I'll just have the track flow right into the next track. And I don't have a ton of time to like bank up to the next thing like I used to do. I used to have it set up like this. So if, if you had it into a stomp preset mode, or I'm sorry, should be preset stomp. Where is it? There you go. That's how I used to have it set up. My presets on the top and then my stomps on the bottom. Um, I'm not going to get into why I did that, but I, at the time it seemed like a good idea. Then I tried stomp presets. Um, this, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, guys, to be honest with you. This is the best way to do it. Um, so anyways, yeah, I've got all my songs here. A lot of times I don't have time to like bank up and down to get to my next preset, so having it right here is perfect. Uh, click over. And make sure you always, when you're editing, just a quick tip, make sure you're always saving it, your preset, with 
the snapshot of whatever their first snapshot you want it to be. So for me, it's always like an intro. Um, otherwise, when you load one, I don't know if any of these are... Okay, there you go. So I was working on this last night, tweaking some stuff during rehearsal. If you save, you, if you're editing the chorus, right, and then you hit save, when you load that preset, it's going to open on the snapshot you were last working on. Uh, where you hit save. So make sure you've always got it saved to whatever preset or snapshot, sorry, you want first when you open the preset. Okay? So to me, that's the fastest way of doing that. The carryover is great, like no noise or anything. It, it switches over really well. Uh, so it makes it makes for really smooth song transitions, especially if you're if you're if you guys are in an environment where you're flowing between tracks really quickly. Um, so yeah, that's that. I, I I really would challenge you guys to just try this and and see if you like it. I, I think you'll be really happy with it. I, this is not new. Look, I know a ton of people have done this, and I sort of like didn't understand, and I'm late to the train, I guess. Uh, but um, yeah, if you haven't done this. Highly recommend it. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is uh, just a couple of quick hacks that I've done for when you're playing on stage and your lighting kind of sucks or you're like needing to jump in and out of environments quickly, plug on plug. Uh, I just want to show you some of these things I've done with this strike tape. Maybe be helpful for you. So let me jump in on that a little bit tighter. All right, so the first thing I did, um, which if you're going to do any of this, do this. It's the most important is I've got, um, just on this strike tape, uh, an arrow pointing to where my volume actually is. So I just covered over the line, I just centered it on the line that's already existing on this little knob. I cannot tell you how many times I've bumped that knob live on accident and been like, what the freak is going on with my sound? Doesn't sound right, it's not loud. And then I look down and you can barely see that line. It's, a, it's so annoying to me. Um, so I put a little strike tape on there and then just colored in a little arrow. So now with my foot, I easily know where my volume is. I highly recommend doing that. The other thing, and I'll just pan over here, I've got some strike tape just on the edge of my volume pedal. Uh, sometimes, I know this sounds ridiculous, but sometimes like if we're doing this really dramatic lighting thing and the lights are down in the room, it is like pitch black and you can barely see uh, anything on here and I'm a lot of times I'm worried I'm stepping on this little thing so this gives me like really this is just a line to not bump my other pedals and then I can sort of see like how far is too far on my foot I have a big foot so I know this probably seems silly to some people but this is actually really helpful for me uh, and then finally you know what I'm gonna jump around to the other side hold on Okay, so just to get it on tight on here, and I know this is upside down, but this is the easiest way I think you're gonna be able to see this. So I have my XLRs labeled on here, XLR left, XLR right, um, so that I, when I'm standing on the other side of the board, I can, I can read this. And it really helps me to just plug them in quickly. And then finally, um, I've got USB labeled right here so that I can see where my little plug in is. These things, I know they're, they're very, small and not seem probably not like a big deal uh, but for me they're very helpful be just because of the pace in which I'm kind of playing and working uh, I cannot tell you how many times on a dark stage I've been trying to fidget with these stupid XLRs and get them in um, or I'm transitioning from one platform to the next in the same building and it just I don't know it just helps me because I'm probably a little bit uh, a little bit slow compared to other people but anyways hope that's helpful and um yeah those are my my quick little hacks for for live stage use so that's it guys for the week uh quick video short video i know it's not super enlightening but uh, i think it could be helpful for some of you guys and girls just as we're entering the weekend uh, if you have questions as always feel free to uh, hit me up on either slack or youtube uh, I try to stay on top of that stuff. Apologize if there's been a delay in your responses. Um, but yeah, I appreciate so much the subscriptions. I, I was—I literally just logged on to to check to make sure I was getting all my notifications, and I realized that I've like totally missed the 200 subscriber mark. Uh, putting a thank you out for for you guys. So thank you to everyone who's been joining. I really appreciate the support. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe now. 
And uh, if you haven't joined Slack, please join Slack. Uh, I, again, just, I feel blown away by the response. So thank you all for the support. And I hope to keep doing this. So keep me inspired and you guys have fun this weekend. And remember to celebrate. We'll see you next week.